Alright guys, felt a little guilty for not showing you guys the chaos that ensues over here. Um, one of the reasons I didn't, I wasn't going to film is because you really can't see the birds very well uh, in the design front that I have up there. Uh, but these are going to be eight pairs that I'm going to breed in here. Uh, as you guys can see, I went ahead and put some tar paper on the perches. I shut the window seal off. I cardboard everything and anywhere the birds can land on. Because uh, I had a hard time when I moved the cocks in here. Uh, I had a hard time them picking a box. I find them sitting on the water heater or sitting on the window seal. Uh, and, you know, if they don't pick a box, then you'll have one cock picking multiple boxes, which I ended up having that cock in the bottom take all four boxes, top to bottom, this season. But if he's going to be a jackass, well, that's what he gets. Now, here I have a couple birds or a few pair of birds, I should say. Uh, that I'm trying as well. A lot of some of these birds are race winners, some of these birds are breeders. Uh, in the top corner here, this is Raven's half brother and his hen from the Bear Lofts birds. They bred two phenomenal birds this year. One of my two, I should say, my best flying red birds I had this year. First drop on a 200 and an outright winner at 200. Both nest mates from the same nest balls, 1066 and 1065. So it was an unbelievable mating right from the get go. This, of course, is a son off of Casanova and Raven's half brother. So I'm putting those back together. I'm actually putting a lot of birds back together this year. Um, I've always been a fan of, you know, remating birds, or I should say, never remating birds, uh, thinking that I was going to somehow build on that. But I think this year I'm going back to the pairs that bred well are going to stay together. Um, this here, this cockbird's his final chance. I bred him in the last couple years with no success. I bred a couple decent youngsters out of him, but nothing really phenomenal. Um, he is a fifth place classic winner. Uh, and this hen that I have him to here is my classic winner's sister. Um, she is a uh, third hatch. She is a 92, so 1092 is her band. So she didn't do super well, but she didn't miss a single race. And she went to the 400 twice. So I can't argue that. I think if she was a, a earlier bred youngster, she would have done phenomenally. And you really can't argue that. I mean, to, to go to the to the 400 twice and make it with no problem and in the top positions, I can't really argue. She's just, like I said, she's probably a May hatch, maybe even as late as June. Um, this down here is a pair I recently got from a real good buddy of mine, Jack Burek. Um, he also has a YouTube page, guys, and I want to encourage you guys to go visit it. Um, him and I have built pretty similar looking boxes in uh, the main breeder loft and he actually has the tutorial on how he did it and, and if you guys really want to check that out I would suggest you guys do so um, this grizzle cock here is off of his top breeder the white lightning uh, and this little check hen is one of his top racers I believe she's a race winner or she's a multiple race winner so I'm going to try them together this year and hopefully they score if not then I'll mix them up but I do like them a lot I think I like the hen a little more but time will tell. The cock was, or this youngster, the grizzle, was bred for stock. He was a much later hatch. It wasn't raised. Uh, so I think he still has a lot of growing to do, a lot of maturing to do. And I think I'll like him equally as well. But we'll see. They seem to be taken to each other. We'll give him some time. Over here, let me get my marble straight. We have my other bear bird. Man, these things got tight. I'll go from this side. So he is my 250 mile winner from the previous year also a money winner and this hen here is 703 so she placed let me get she placed no so 703 is up here she was sixth place classic bird that's why i made it her to a fifth place classic she is 92 she is a sister to my classic bird so i'm put those two together that's his final year uh, last year he didn't breed anything substantially but i did get rid of the hen because she didn't, hasn't bred anything in the past anyway. This right here is a relic. A relic to a time that no longer exists because Big Mama is long gone. She was my hen that came home after six years. Uh, I sold her. I got rid of her. She was sold to Maryland. And after six years, she come, she came home back to my dad's house where my old loft was. Um, she, He is a direct son off of her and my now long gone Big Red. So he also has 11 flights on each wing. So I call him 11. Uh, this will be the first year breeding him. I gave him up 
as a youngster, as a squeaker, and I didn't realize what I was doing. I gave him to a real good buddy of mine, and, and he's used them. He's bred in 18, his top scoring hen. Uh, and then the following year, he gave him back, um, you know, whatever his circumstances were. So I ended up putting him to a really nice hen this year. Also, funny enough, from the same guy. Uh, he put me on a real good hen, so I'm going to pair them together. I think they match very well. He's a little on the large side, and she's perfectly balanced right at the medium side. So I think I'll bring the youngsters down a bit. But I'm excited. He's the last that I have from that mating from Big Red and Big Mama. So I'm excited to get at least a couple youngsters, and hopefully they fly well. Moving over. And guys, a lot of this might not make sense to you because they're my birds, and I know the history. But I'm just trying to, I guess, uh, you know convey how I feel about the birds because some of these birds do have sentimental value to me while others are just basically winners this bird here the checker in the back I did not race but he is a 250 mile winner from a guy in the club that who uh, was gonna race old birds and decided not to so I ended up picking up that bird um, this hen here is a sister she's a chocolate bar hen she's a sister to my seventh place classic bird so I think they will make a really nice pair and so far they've been no issues they took to, to each other right away and I think that be a real nice pair i'd really like to get some chocolate checkers out of them uh, but i've yet to do so as you guys can tell i am a fan of color and you know there's plenty of race winners why not have a little bit of fun with some color see all the droppings here unfortunately what ends up happening is they'll sit on the perch and they'll just straight crap right on it uh, compared to this side where there's virtually no droppings on it you see this side here both top and bottom are just soiled and it is what it is like i said i'm probably not going to use the nest frets for too much longer but don't want to get off track here come on Ugh. so down here we have a super nice hen that came to my house on the 250 mile truck race from last year so i won that race and i had a few birds come on the drop she was one of them and she was not my bird she was a local club member's bird uh, i notified him uh, we let her go a couple hours later she made it back and luckily enough he promised her to me he said hey if she you know let her finish out the year because she was in a big money race and if she makes it through the whole year he's he's gonna go ahead and give her to me and he did so i'm super lucky to have her she's a really nice hen i want to say she's uh some some cross between hofkin and hubin and of course you guys know gingerbread man he's back there he's been a super breeder he's also a 300 mile race winner he bred some super good youngsters and also bred a grandchild for uh, Mark at Red Star. So Mark's Grizzlecock that he won the 200 mile race with is a grandson off of Gingerbread Man. And it's a funny because he's a red grizzle, that's why I call him Gingerbread Man. And down here is the Jackass. So this Jackass took the four top boxes. So I brought him in here. Like I said, I'm gonna clip his, his wings, make sure he can't fly up to other than his box here and I put him over a 250 mile truck race winner for this year. She is abnormally large, but she's a race winner. So I want to balance him out a little bit. He is a much smaller cock. He's on the much smaller side. You can see she looks more impressive. She's actually the blue bar and he's the dark. She looks much more impressive than he does. So I'm hopefully trying to balance the babies out a little bit because I don't like how big she is and I don't like how small he is. So we'll see if we can get them uh, balanced out nicely. But that's what we got in here, guys. Like I said, a good tip, cover up or remove your nest, uh, perches I need to say, and cover up any spot that the birds like to sit. This isn't permanent, this is just temporary, so I just hung up whatever I could as fast as I could. Uh, same thing up here, I had a lot of them perching up here, so I went ahead and covered that up. You can see my cheat sheet, because I don't remember what birds go where. And, uh, you know, as much fun as it could possibly be, guys, we're having it. I figured I'd make a quick video. I'll probably name it part two of some sort, and we'll go from there, guys.